and take the sting off of your initial insertion of the needle. Sorry, I don't want to use the word needle, but you guys are old enough, so you're not kids. I can use the word needle. Hopefully no one has a phobia. If you do, I apologize. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Doreen Gracia coming to you with another YouTube video and today we're going to be talking about periodontal disease. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet and if you have already been on my channel, welcome again. So when we go to the dentist, it is required by the ADA to be seen every six months, so twice a year, okay? Um, some people may require every three months and some people may require every four months depending on their oral health. So this is when we get into periodontal disease. So periodontal disease is the next step up from gingivitis. So before we get started into periodontal disease, let's talk about what gingivitis is. So gingivitis is the inflammation of the gingiva, which is the gum tissue. So how do we get inflammation of the gum tissue? Well, when we have plaque on our teeth, which is the fuzzy debris that we get on our teeth, it is a foreign bacteria to our mouths. So our mouths react by inflammation and then we see bleeding. Gingivitis though is reversible. <laughs> so because it's reversible, if we practice good hygiene, which we can have another video about how we brush, how we floss, then the gingivitis can be gone. But when we progress into periodontal disease, that means that that plaque has hardened and now it is hardened around the teeth. So sometimes we see people with buildup on their lower front teeth here, um, and you brush and you floss and you cannot seem to get it off. That is what we call tartar or calculus. And calculus is when the plaque becomes calcified. So when that happens, no matter how hard you brush, no matter how hard you floss, it stays there. And it also can form underneath the gums. So when you go in for the de a dental visit, and it's been like two, three years since you've been to the dentist and we take x-rays, sometimes because the calculus under the gums is so dense, it shows up in the x-rays. And I will put insert a picture to show you what that looks like. So when we see that underneath the gum tissue, then that is one sign that you require a deep cleaning. Another sign is when we measure the gum pockets. So when we talk about pockets, let's assume that this, okay, this right here, the wood is your tooth. So we're gonna pull this out a little bit. Okay, this is your tooth, okay, that you can see in your mouth. And here where you see the white is the gum tissue. Now, as you can see, there's a little opening here and that's what we will call the periodontal pocket or just a pocket. So when we measure the gum tissue, we use a periodontal probe. It looks like a little pointy stick. And on that probe, there are lines that measure in millimeters, okay? So one to three millimeters, if we go down in here, is equally healthy. Now, when we pr place the probe in the gum tissue and it starts to go further, like, four millimeters, five millimeters, six millimeters, and so on, that is when we can determine that there is something that is festering up underneath the gum tissue that's causing enough inflammation for the gum tissue to start to pull away from the tooth. Because when we think about swollen gums, they're not tight. They are very flappy, they're spongy, they're swollen. So the tissue is not sticking to the tooth as it would if the, the, the tissue was healthy. So in order for us to clean that out, we have to do a deep cleaning. Now, a lot of people are afraid of deep cleanings, and I think it's because we, we think it's some type of barbaric treatment that you need at the dentist, but it's really not. Um, so what the hygienist does, when we realize that you are a candidate or you are someone that requires, I should say, a deep cleaning or a periodontal therapy, um, we will inform you on the reasons why. We'll show you pictures of buildup that you have above the gum line, okay? We'll show you pictures of your x-rays to show you the buildup that you have beneath the gum line. And then we'll also go over your periodontal probings, which will 
be a collective summary of what the reasons are you require a deep cleaning. Now, with deep cleanings, you do require some form of anesthesia because we want to numb the gum tissue so that throughout the entire process, you are comfortable. Um, one thing that is important to also recognize is that deep cleanings are done in two separate appointments, the left side of your mouth and the right side of your mouth. So you do not do the whole thing in one appointment. So that's one. Two is we use a numbing gel to start with the numbing procedure. So the gel is going to help take the edge off and take the sting off of your initial insertion of the needle. Sorry, I don't wanna use the word needle, but you guys are old enough, so you're not kids. I can use the word needle. Hopefully no one has a phobia. If you do, I apologize. But we put the numbing gel where we're going to insert the needle. We insert the needle, we do an infiltration. So we aren't doing um, anything that's going to numb or uh, put the nerve to sleep because as hygienists, we do infiltrations, which is just to numb the gum tissue. Unless a dentist does it for you, if you are not certified in anesthesia, then that's different. So we'll numb the gum tissue and then we will proceed to do the cleaning. Um, well, the periodontal therapy. Sometimes people are so afraid of needles, they are unable to deal with getting a shot. And we have another way of numbing the gum tissue. One of the ways that I am familiar with is called Oricix. Now, Oricix is a type of gel that is deposited within the gum tissue. So it looks like a needle, but it is not. It goes around your tooth. And that allows the gum tissue surrounding the teeth that we will be cleaning to become numb for a limited time, okay? Um, so that is another form of anesthesia or numbing the gum tissue during a deep cleaning. So after the deep cleaning is complete, we take a post-op bite wing. Now a bite wing is an x-ray that takes that you bite down on and it takes the side teeth. And what that is gonna allow us to see is if there's any remaining buildup underneath the gum tissue. Because we're not able to see it, so we need to take an x-ray. Not all hygienists or dentists take post-op x-rays, that is okay. It depends on the severity of the case, it depends on how much buildup there was. Sometimes you can very confidently say you have everything removed and you do not need an x-ray. Um, once that x-ray is complete, or lack thereof, um, we're going to rinse out the gum tissue with some sort of antimicrobial rinse. Sometimes they use Paradex, sometimes they use Chlorhexidine. There are different things that they use. All of these things are used to rinse out the gum tissue after removing that buildup because we want to make sure it's nice and fresh and clean in there. Okay, um, and then that's it. You're good to go. And then you will come back for the second side. After you are done with your deep cleaning, it is important to recognize that that is not the end of your journey with keeping your oral health up to par. Now you have to come every three months for a periodontal maintenance, okay? Periodontal maintenance is where you and I come together every three months just to see how the pocketing is reducing, if the bleeding is reducing, if the buildup that you were accumulating before is reducing, how your hygiene is, if you're flossing, because all of these things are going to make sure you don't go back to where you started before you needed a deep cleaning, okay? So once your every three month appointments are going great, you get 100% every time you come in, then you're able to graduate to every four months every six months you know it all depends on how you're doing because you see your hygienist every three months okay four times a year every four months okay three times a year every six months okay two times a year but all those other days that you are not in my chair or any other hygienist chair that is your responsibility to make sure you're doing your part and putting in the effort that is necessary to keep your oral health at bay um it is important to understand that our teeth are important our mouths connect to our entire body as one oral health connects to full 
general health, okay? When we think about heart disease and things of that nature, we do find the bacteria that is present in our mouths in the, the in the heart as well. Um, that's just one of the examples. Sometimes with periodontal disease, it affects um, having children because you, you can have issues with pregnancy with periodontal disease. So that's why it's important when you're pregnant to have a cleaning at a certain point in your pregnancy to make sure the bacteria that is in your mouth is at a minimum. Um, diabetes connects to periodontal disease as well. Um, so basically, I just want to I just wanted to inform you guys. Sorry, I just had a tongue tie. I just want to inform you guys on what a deep cleaning is, what the process is, and you don't need to be afraid. You do not need to be afraid of, of deep cleaning. A lot of people are afraid of the dentist. We understand that. I was afraid of the dentist. I was a terror as a patient. But, you know, as a hygienist, I put myself in every patient's shoes. Depending on how they react to me is how I'm going to make sure I care for them enough for them to feel comfortable to come to the dentist, okay? There's also laughing gas, which is nitrous oxide that you can use to help relax you. It's something that you can add on to your appointment until you feel you don't need it anymore. Um, dentistry is not what it used to be. Just like in any other field, there are going to be hygienists that may be a little rough. There are going to be dentists that may be a little rough, but dentistry has progressed so much. And I think it's important to understand that we are here for you. We are here for your oral health. We are here to educate you. We are here to be your friend, aside from your professional or your clinician, I should say. So um, if you needed a deep cleaning at any point, please comment below what your experience was, um, how you felt afterwards. Were you able to keep up with your hygiene after your deep cleaning? Um, and if you need a deep cleaning right now, um, please let me know what your feelings are. Do you feel like it's necessary? Do you feel like it's overkill? Um, and maybe we can chat a little bit. Um, so my plan is to do dental related videos on Mondays. So every Monday it will be another dental topic. So um, next Monday we're going to be talking about root canals because that is an infamous terror for a lot of people so many people are afraid of root canals they hear the word root canal and they run and hide so we can talk about root canals and what they're about what makes them painful why they really aren't supposed to be painful and what leads up to them becoming a painful procedure because it should not be a painful procedure so we'll talk about that next time it was so nice speaking to you guys like comment you know you gotta subscribe okay and i'll be speaking to you guys soon bye